This week I caked one of my favorite chocolate bars, Twix. We didn't really make it Twix. I thought it was a Twix mega cake. I did make a Twix. Like an actual giant Twix. You haven't seen the picture? Where, do we have no. a picture? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> So a Twix bar has three main elements. It has a cookie, caramel, and chocolate. My Twix cakes are going to have a fourth element. You guessed it, cake. This is how to cake it. The shortbread crust is really, really simple. It only has four ingredients. So you beat the butter and sugar together. Then you stir the salt into the flour and you add that mixture to the butter and sugar. Now that my cookie dough is ready, I'm going to press it into a nine by 13 rectangle pan. Make sure that your pan is lined with parchment and I also line the sides with parchment. I like to use a small, I have like a four inch square pan to really press the crumbs down and compress them. Before I bake my shortbread, I wanna mark it off because I'm going to have to cut this shortbread while it's still warm into the strips that are the size of my giant Twix. I'm marking the shortbread with a knife and then I'm just using a bench scraper to cut down into the shortbread. Oh, and also before you bake it, use a fork to just prick the strips. This just helps the air release uh, because the shortbread is so dense and we don't want it to expand or puff up. So what I see, there's footage, there's three strips of cookie and then there's sort of like a lovely edge which I ended up consuming. <laughs> I baked my shortbread at 350 degrees for 30 minutes and then I let it cool for like 10, 15 minutes. Just, I still want it to be warm, but I don't want it to be so hot that I'm burning myself. The tricky thing is removing it from the pan in one piece. I had a cake board cut to the size of my pan. I laid it inside on top of the cookie, and then I put a non-slip mat, and then I put another smaller cake pan in, and then I flipped. And this way, when I flipped the cookie out, it was on a flat board. I removed the parchment and then I had to flip it back right side up so I could see all the markings I made. And very carefully, I used a chef's knife to cut those markings so that I had three strips of cookie. I cannot tell you how good this smells. We would win. Like if we had scratch and sniff TV or scratch and sniff YouTube, could you imagine? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be amazing. It would be amazing. Uh, to melt the caramels down, I placed them all in a large pot, and then I added some cream. I need the caramels to melt and be still be solid enough to reset in a cake pan. So I don't want to add so much cream, but if you don't add enough, um, they'll tend to burn at the bottom of the pot. And slowly you start to see the cream turn to the color of caramel. You just gotta stir it and eventually, believe it or not, it all sort of liquefies. And once that happens, you can pour it into a prepared pan. You want the pan to be the same size that you baked your cake in and baked your shortbread in. And just line that pan well with parchment paper. I even greased the parchment paper because this caramel is super sticky. I'm gonna let it cool at room temperature and once it's cool, I'm gonna put it in the fridge and chill it. You can do this days ahead of your Twix as well. What I'm scared of is when I remove it from the pan, will it spread? I'm gonna take the time now to prep my vanilla cake. As usual, I remove my cake from its pan, I level it, I remove the caramelization from the bottom. And now I'm gonna cut it into the same size strips that I cut my cookie. Uh -huh. Now I have three strips of cake, and I don't know how to tell you this, but Sir Squeeze will not be needed in this video. Oh, seriously? Seriously. Stay, stay, stay with me. I can't I'm really afraid of simple syruping these cakes and for any moisture to be on the side of them because then when I try and cover this with chocolate, the chocolate won't stick. So I'm just trying to avoid 
all of the problems that I'm foreshadowing in my head. Twix, Twixes, Twix, Twix, it's Twix. Twix are completely uh, enrobed in chocolate. So even the bottom has a thin layer of chocolate. I'm going to melt down some candy melts, mostly milk chocolate candy melts, but I did mix some dark chocolate into it. Pour a line of this chocolate onto my silicone mat and spread it evenly with a small offset spatula. Before the chocolate sets, it's very important that I carefully pick up the cookie cake strip and lay it onto the chocolate. Now I'm gonna put it into the fridge for like two minutes to let it set, but I don't want it to get too hard because before it gets too hard, I want to cut away the excess chocolate that's hanging out from underneath the cookie. So I repeat this step with my other two cookie cakes. Now they all have chocolate on the bottom. What is the plural of Twix? I don't think it's Twixes. I think it's just Twix. So I think the X is like K-S. I think it's a Twix. No, no, I don't think, I don't think it's, this is one Twix and this is one Twix. Leave a comment below about what you think is a single Twix is. Oh, you just want to prove you're right. Sure, guys, comment below. Do you think it's Twix no matter what, singular or plural? Or do you think Orhan's right? That's so ridiculous. It's time to place these strips of cake onto my strips of shortbread cookie. I kept trying to think of how I'd glue them together. I could have used chocolate, that would have worked well, except when I cut my Twix at the end, I don't wanna see a brown line in the middle. You know what I mean? When you bite into a Twix, you just see cookie caramel covered in chocolate, and that's what I wanna see. So I decided to dab on some clear piping gel onto the top. So just dab it on and then lay a cake strip on top of the cookie. It's very important you dab, because anytime I brushed, it just dredged up all the crumbs of the crumbly shortbread. Do this for all three. Yes, I know, there's two Twixes, but I needed insurance. So I made three. Leave a comment below, we want three or more Twix. Now that I've placed my cake strips on top of my shortbread cookie strips, I realize that it is too high. I'm going to re-level these cakes while they're on top of the cookie. And this way I'll have one level surface. The thing I'm most excited about is my vanilla cake and the shortbread cookie were almost exactly the same color. So now I'm really happy because I know when this is done and I cut it, it's gonna look like a Twix, even though there's cookie and cake inside. Get it? Orhan, you look yeah. very confused. Yeah, 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 I got it. Orhan is doing this interview from his couch. He's extre I'm gonna show them. He's extremely comfortable right now. Orhan, look, show them how comfortable you are. Oh, no, no, I refuse to let you lay down. Okay? Why? Because we don't want snoring in this video. Sit back up. <laughs> That's more like it. Thank you. <laughs> Caramel. Oh, God. <gasps> I don't want to talk about this because this is when... Just talking about it. I know, but this is when it got stressful. Don't worry, guys. It all worked out in the end. Okay, so I flipped the caramel out. I'm gonna make sure to flip it out onto a sill pat because like I said, this stuff is really sticky. So I gotta be really careful. And I removed all the parchment and then I flipped it back on another sill pat. Already I can see that it's spreading. Like the whole rectangle wants to spread. I'm gonna try and ignore that. I'm using a ruler uh, to cut the same size strips. So I cut my cookies and my cake to the same size. Now I have to cut the caramel to the same size. I managed to cut three strips, but just like I thought, as soon as I cut them, they're spreading. So now they're becoming larger than the size I want. And this makes me realize I'm gonna have to construct each Twix separately and cover it one at a time. I was hoping I could do this like an assembly line. Line them all up, get them on a rack, cover them, but because of the caramel situation, I'm gonna have to lock this caramel into my giant chocolate bars as fast as I can. What I wanna do is have my cake lined up on a rack, so that way I can pour the chocolate over it and all of the excess will drip underneath. 
to a cookie sheet and now it's go time. So the most important thing I can say is have everything ready because we need to be fast. Um, you know how Twix at the top looks kind of like rippled? Like it's not just completely flat, it looks sort of rippled. So my idea was the extra caramel that I had cut away, I pulled it and twisted it to make just thin strips. And then I laid those strips on top of the caramel of the Twix, thinking that when I covered it, we'd see that texture. The problem is I did all that work for nothing because <laughs> the caramel just kept running. So it just all like blended into itself and there was no texture left. That was fun. And now I'm going to carefully pick up my bowl of chocolate and pour all the way from one end to the other. And I want to move my bowl back and forth to make sure I'm covering the sides. I'm getting really worried because as I'm doing this, I can see that the caramel on top of the cake is, is like running down the sides as I'm covering. It's causing me a lot of stress, but truth be told, Twix bars are sort of rounded. So even though there's no caramel on the side in an actual Twix bar, that caramel running was rounding out the bar and making it look more realistic. So I'm trying to focus on that rather than my stress level. Once it's covered, I want to get it in the fridge as fast as I can to let that chocolate set and lock everything in. Now I'm going to take it out of the fridge and I need to have a look at what's going on. I need to assess what's happening. So very carefully, I run a spatula under the cake and I lift it up from the rack and then I turn it over in my hand and I can see that caramel is sort of dripping out the bottom. So now what I've got to do is use some of my melted chocolate and just ice it on. And I'm basically seam hiding with chocolate, which is not fun at all. It's not fun at all. That's why the seam hider isn't here. It's me. She doesn't want any part of this. What are you doing? Are you like, like I saw the screen like Guy Ritchie. Like, what are you doing? Are you doing somersaults? I'm just, I'm just changing positions. So oh, okay. Okay. Oh, enjoy your couch. I'm on a stool. Thank <laughs> you so much. I haven't forgot about the ripples on top of the Twix and I figured out a way to solve that. I'm going to put some chocolate into a parchment piping bag and then I'm going to cut uh, a fairly big hole at the top and sort of randomly pipe. I'm going to drizzle the Twix bar with chocolate. And now I'm going to recover all these cakes with chocolate. I'm really happy that I did the chocolate drizzling underneath because it's working. I can completely see that Twix, Twixy texture on top. And now I have three giant Twix bars. One of them is insurance. Uh, you know what I need to do though? I need to cut one in half. on its way and my favorite thing about Easter is Easter brunch with everyone I love which unfortunately this year none of us will be able to do. But don't worry because that weekend I have a Bake You Happy live stream workshop on and we will be making my avocado toast cake together. And along the way you can ask me anything you need to know and I'll be here to help. It's a great way of connecting while we're all apart. We can do this together and you'll walk away feeling so proud of what you made. And I make a lot of other things too, so click here to check them out. I will see you next week.